I am ready when you are, so fire away. Kate. Sure. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start anything else is I'm going to decide whether I want to write a sine function or a cosine function. Okay, You can do either one, but if we choose wisely here we can make our lives easy or make our lives difficult. I'm a fan of trying to make my life as easy as possible. So what I want to do is choose to sine or cosine based on the information that I'm given so the problem becomes as easy as it possibly can. Here is the rule that I'm going to use to make this decision. If the point or points that I'm given in the problem are maxes or mins, I'm going to choose to use cosine. If the points that I'm given are midline points, or a free point, that is we're not told if it's a max or min, or a midline point, we don't know anything about it, just a point, I'm gonna use sine in those cases. If I'm given both maxes, mins, and midline points, or like one of each, I'll choose to use sine, because sine is diff typically easier to write than cosines are. Everybody's okay with that plan? So for this problem, number four, I'm going to choose sine or cosine. Cosine because I'm given a max or a min as my point. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Oops. So, because we have a minimum, we're going to write a cosine function. So I'll just write that. All right, we're told the amplitude is 3. So remember, the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So that tells me A is plus or minus 3. I'm told the period, which I know is 2 pi absolute value C, that that's 5. If I divide both sides of this equation by 2 pi, C is going to be 5 over 2 pi. And I'm choosing to make C positive because I'm always going to choose to make C positive. So far, so good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is try to figure out the sign for A and the H and K. So I picked my parent function to be cosine. From that parent function, I'm going to use the point 0, 1, which is a maximum. That's always true whenever I'm using cosine as the equation that I'm writing. I'm always going to use 0, 1 as my point from cosine and that point is always a maximum. And I'm going to transform that point zero, 1 into the point 5, negative 6, the point that I'm given in my resultant function. Because we're going from max to min, what does that tell me about the value of A? that the A has to be negative because the type of extreme point is changing from a max to a min. What if they were the same? What if it was max to max? Then A would be positive. Everybody's okay with that? So we know now that our A is negative 3. Okay. 
next item, we get our age. Because our parent function's x coordinate is zero, the h will just be the x coordinate from the resultant function. Everybody's okay with that? Now let's find our k. I'm going to draw a little picture to do this, okay? So we have like our x-axis or whatever, and we have the point 5, negative 6. That's a minimum, right? So we know our k is going to come through here somewhere. How far up from that is it going to be? Well, it's going to be one amplitude, right? How, what is our amplitude? Three. So I'm starting at negative six and I'm moving up three units. Where will that midline be? So I start at negative six and I go to negative five, negative four, negative three when I've gone up three units. So what is K? Negative three. Negative three. I'm legit just counting, right? Because I understand where the midline needs to be and what the relationship between amplitudes and mins and maxes and midlines are, right? Yes. So the amplitude is three. The A value is negative three. That from the y. I'm just counting. So I'm starting at negative 6. Why are we starting at negative 6? Oh, the minimum. Because oh, okay. that's the point that we're given, right? At 5, negative 6. And the amplitude is just going up oh, okay. 3 units from there. Okay. So we start at negative 6. And we went to negative 5, negative 4, <laughs> negative 3. Okay. So I went up 3 units. That's where my k needs to come through. Okay. Does that make sense? That's it. Keep it simple, right? Like draw a picture and count. So that's it, right? We have our A we have our ACH and K now, right? So we're done. So Y equals negative three cosine of now instead of writing one over C as one over five over two pi. I'm going to write that as the reciprocal, right? So are we just plugging it back in on where it like kind of starts? Or like how do I know how to cut it off? Like so the equation that we're writing is that standard transformation. Right? I wrote trig there to stand for either sine or cosine. Okay. But a times sine of 1 over c times x minus h plus k. Same form that we've been using over and over and over and over again. Wait. Um, like, just for example, the homework course, like, we have to memorize that? Or will we, like, this thing that we've used in every single homework problem, we've done this entire chapter. I would hope that we have that memorized. Yeah, perfect. That's <laughs> We did we did two full assignments where all we were doing was pulling the A, C, H, and Ks from this formula, right? Like worksheet one from chapter one, or I'm sorry, worksheet whatever, yeah, worksheet one, chapter one, and worksheet three, chapter th three, were both just like pulling A, C, H, and Ks from this formula. We have that by now. Yeah, I'm not limited. I'm limiting you guys to one more problem. We can do more than one more problem. Yes. Let's focus here, guys. Go ahead, Miriam. Mm -hmm. So h for five. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we 
So whenever the x coordinate on the parent function is zero, the h will be the x coordinate from the resultant. Okay. So that's that's a what? Whenever the x coordinate for the parent function is a zero, the h is going to be the x coordinate from the resultant. That's why. Of all the points on the graph, y equals cosine, we pick the point 0, 1, because its x-coordinate is 0, so we're going to get the h for free. Okay. That's why when we use sine as our parent function, we choose the point 0, 0, because I get the h for free. I could have just as easily gone and... Well, not just as easily. I could have picked any of these reference points to use from cosine, right? Like I could have used this one. That's another maximum. But now it's a pain in the butt to get the H out of it because it requires more algebra. It's not free. If I choose this one where the X coordinate is zero, the X coordinate from the resultant is just going to be the H. That's why we're doing it that way. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, Grace. For sine, the k is just the y coordinates. Correct. So the same statement would hold for the y coordinates. Notice for cosine, though, the y coordinate in the parent is not zero. So the y coordinate from the resultant function will not be k. If you wanted to get it that way, we know that ay plus k is going to be the, right, we know like when we graph these things, we use this transformation to transform the points from our parent function to our resultant function, right? So, in that case, then, ay plus k would have to equal negative 6. So the a in this case we said was going to be negative 3. The y is positive 1. So to solve this for k, we would just add 3 to both sides. And k is negative 3. So you could think about it that way as well. I prefer just kind of sketching a picture and doing some counting because I think that's easier than like doing what we just did there. But it's basically the same thing we did when graphing. We're just working backward instead of forward. But it's up to you. Grace, does that feel yeah. good? Mora. Oh, can we do one with signs? Sure. Do you have a preference? We can just do this next one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here, we're told we have a midline point. So that's gonna, we're going to use a sine function. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we're not told what kind of midpoint this is, whether it's the minimum is happening before it or if it's happening after it. So guess what we can do? We get to choose which one we want to have happen. Does it matter which one we choose? No, but you'll get a different answer depending on which one you choose. But both answers would be correct. Or could be correct, I should say. So from our parent function, we use the point 0, 0 every time we use sine. That 0, 0 has a minimum before it and a maximum after it. From our resultant function, we're going to use the point 415. I'm going to choose that it's the same kind of midpoint because we're not told what kind of midpoint it is. So I can pick. Because they are the same kind of point, what does that tell me about the A? It's got to be positive. Yeah. 
because the x coordinate on the parent function is zero, the y coordinate in the resultant function is our h. And since the y coordinate on the parent function is zero, the y coordinate in our resultant can be our k. Look at that. We just got h and k for virtually doing nothing, right? They're just the coordinates from the point because we're using a sine function. Ooh, pretty nice. Okay, the amplitude is the square root of six, but we know a is positive, so that just has to be positive root six. The last thing we need to do is figure out our c. We know the period is 2 pi times the absolute value of c, which in this case is 7 pi. So if I divide both sides by 2 pi, I get c is 7 over 2, because I'm always going to choose c to be positive. And that's everything I need. to write my sine function. So y equals a sine 1 over c. Instead of writing 1 over 7 over 2, I'm just going to write the reciprocal. x minus h plus k. Does that feel OK? What else do you guys want to talk about? I'm in no rush. If you want to ask about more things, you're welcome to ask about more things. The more you're making faces, go like, ahead. What else is on the quiz? Like... Well, what, do, what have we done so far in chapter three? Um, We've graphed. Yeah, so could be in there. And we've gone from a graph to an equation. Sure. So that was all on worksheet three, graph to equation. Sorry. All right. So here's a graph, and it's asking me to write an equation from it. So this one asks you to do, to write your answer both as a sine answer and then as a cosine answer. In general, I would just ask you to give me one or the other. Sometimes I'd tell you which one I want, sometimes I'd let you choose whichever one you want to do. So the first thing I like to do when doing this is I want to look for the midline. 
So I'm just going to look with my eyes for the horizontal line that divides the graph in half. So I have an equal amount of the graph above my midline and below my midline. Should be pretty clear that that's my midline, right? That goes through the y coordinate 1. So that tells me k is 1. That'll be the same regardless if you pick a sine function or a cosine function to do. The k is always the same. So far, so good. Next, I'm going to look at for my amplitude. That's the distance from my midline to an extrema. So if I count my boxes, I went up one, two boxes. So my amplitude is two. That tells me that my A is going to be plus or minus two. I don't know which one it's going to be, positive or negative two. That'll depend on whether I'm using sine or cosine. And then the point that I pick to uh, do my transformation. Next, I'm going to do the period, because that's going to give me the C value. So from minimum to minimum, for example, is one cycle. My period begin, or my cycle begins at pi over 2, and it ends at 5 pi over 2. How far did I go? No. If you start at a half and you go to two and a half, how far did you go? Two pi is the period, right? So here I can see that C is 1, right? I'll always choose the C to be positive, and the C will be the same whether you're doing a sine or a cosine function. So we're just going from each minimum to the next minimum? Or from max to max. Okay. Basically what you want to do is cover an entire cycle. I mean, you could go from like there to there. Like that's one cycle. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. Doesn't have to be from min to min. Okay. It's just like there was a lot of space below. So I, if I was going to write stuff, I felt like writing it below, I had more room to write than if I did from max to max. But I could have just as easily done that. Okay. They'll all be the same, right? Whether I did, you know, here to here, right? If I did like there to there. Like, they're all going to give you the same distance. They're all one cycle. Okay? All right. So the last thing that I need to do still is I need to figure out whether that A should be positive or negative and to find my value for H. So for sine, the parent function we're going to pick is 0, 0, which is a minimum, midline, max point. For my resultant function, I'm going to pick another midline point. I would pick the one that's labeled for me already, which is pi comma 1. If I look at that point preceding it as a minimum, and following it as a maximum. So that tells me that the A should be positive 2, because they're the same kind of midline point. And the H should be what? Pi. Great. Why? Because zero, the X is 0 for the pair so the H should just be the X for the resultant. Somebody was listening. 
That's great. Don't be embarrassed. You should be proud. You should be like, eat it, haters. I'm going to do good. All right. Now let's do cosine. When we do cosine, the parent function point we always pick is 0, 1. That's a maximum. So cosine, then sin is 0, 0? Mm -hmm. Okay. So from the resultant function, I want to pick either a maximum or a minimum point from my function. It does not matter which one I pick. Let's just say we picked the minimum. So that's the point pi over 2 comma negative 1. Because we're going from max to min, what does that tell me our value for a needs to be? Negative 2, right? Negative, and we knew the amplitude the a was already plus or minus 2, so it just tells us it's negative 2. And what does my h have to be? pi over 2. And then we just put the thing, put our, write our equations together, right? So if I was writing my sine, I'd say y equals negative 2 sine of 1 over c x minus h plus k. And if I was writing my cosine, we'd say y equals 2 cosine 1 over c x minus h plus k. And we're done. So keep in mind the three parts that are the same regardless of whether you're doing a sine or cosine. You can find the a value up to its sine. You can find the k and you can find the C the same way, whether it's sine or cosine. Can you go over how many bounds? So I was going from min to min. And if you're confused at the arithmetic I did, let's just count then. So if I look at the x-axis, it seems like every tick mark is a half a pi. So I start here and I went a half a pi. That's one pi. One and a half pi, two pi. That's my period. So that should equal two pi times c. So I divide both sides by two pi. Two pi divided by two pi is one. And there's my c. Does that feel better? Okay. If you don't like fractions, most of these, if you have a picture, we can get away with just counting. So if you don't feel good about it, just like look at the x-axis and see where the tick marks are. Look at the y-axis, see where the tick marks are. And we can just count. You don't have to do arithmetic. OK? Does that feel OK, everybody? Would you like to do anything else before we start? Again, I am in no rush but I'm not going to keep doing examples for my own benefit unless you guys are asking about it. Grace. Uh, it's, it's just, right? The C, the K, and the A up to its sign is the same for sine or cosine. It's not going to change. Regardless of what you're doing, you don't have to make a decision about that when you're given a graph until you've you know, like you can find those three and then figure out, well, do I want to do a sine or a cosine? Dominic. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Maura. You're giggling a lot. I figure you got another one. Oh, no. I think I'm good, actually. Wait, are these, these are like, is this kind of the only? Yeah. Again, the three things that we looked at primarily in chapter one. Can we maybe just do description too? Or, or this, this is not description, right? This so is we did, 
Yes. Okay. We did three things. We did three things in chapter three. Primarily, we did a little bit more than three, but primarily three things. We went from equation to graph. We went from graph to equation. That's what we just did here. And we went from description to equation. That's what we did in these first questions you guys asked about. This is a description to an equation. Okay. The only thing that we've done, spent a lot of time doing that we haven't talked about yet today, is going from equation to graph. Yes. You just have to ask. Is this what we did the first time, like the first thing ever? The first thing ever. That is the same thing, actually transformations and graphing. The way we approach the graphing is via transformation. Oh, they're the kind of the same thing. So let's say we do one of these, yeah? So the first thing I need to do on any graphing problem I need A, C, H, and K. How do I get those? A is in negative three. Well, I need like place to write too. I can't just like have it like this. Like now you can see it, but where am I gonna write? Like I get it guys, I know. But like you chose to sit at the back, there's lots of seats open in the front. I'm just saying, like you can't have it both ways. You can't complain about the size of the board and sit in the back when there's seats in the front open. You know, like I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, but like, come on, people. Yeah. All right. Means you should be able to read this, no problem. Maybe they had it the wrong way. I can see the negative three in the side. Okay. So what is the A then? Negative three. Great. What is the C? One over one half. No. So I could rewrite. So if we're rewriting this, right? You can rewrite the two as one over one half. But what does that mean C is then? One half. One half. One half. Always the res Stop talking. The C, always the reciprocal of the coefficient on X. You guys know what I mean when I say coefficient? That's the number in front of a variable. Okay, what is the H? This is going to be tricky here. Nope. That says pi over two. It's not. It's not two pi. It's not pi. It's not pi over two. Two. It's not two. What? Pi over four. Who said that? Great job, Kate. That is correct. So the reason is we have to factor the two off, right? When I factor something off. I'm dividing by two. One half divided in half is a fourth, right? If you think about you have a pizza, you take half of the pizza and divide it in half again, you have a quarter, right? That's where the pi over four is. Okay, everybody okay there? And what is the K? zero, right? Because there's nothing at the end. Okay. So capital A stands for amplitude. What's the amplitude for this problem? Three, the absolute value of A. M is the midline. What is the midline for this problem? We just used it to do the problems on the other side. No. It's K. It's Y equals K. What is the K in this case? So we want to write Y equals zero. 
Am I going to mark it wrong if you don't write y equals if you just write 0? Yes. 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 Remember I told you that. Okay. What's the period? How do we calculate the period? 2 pi times absolute value c, right? What's 2 pi times a half? Pi. There's my period. And f is frequency. What's the relationship between frequency and period? They're reciprocals. So that's that part. Now to get the points to graph, what am I going to do? I'm going to write my transformation map. So I did CX plus H comma AY plus K. The same transformation we've been using over and over and over again. And because this is a sine graph, I'm going to use the reference points for sine, which I would provide to you. Or if you're doing a problem, you would look up off of the sheet that has the reference points on it. You don't need to memorize these, although after you do two or three or four graphing problems, I'd be surprised if you didn't kind of accidentally memorize them. So what I'm going to do now to get my transform points is I'm going to plug 0 in for x and then 0 in for y. 1 half times 0 is 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. Negative 3 times 0 is plus 0 is there's my first point. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my next point. 1 half times pi over 2 is boy that's too long of a delay. How do we multiply fractions? Back to 6th grade or 5th grade or 4th grade. I don't remember. It's a long time ago, but you should have done this like 100,000 times by now. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, is I know you do it every year. In geometry, you do it. In algebra 2, you do it. In algebra 1, you do it. These are not things that ever go away because fractions don't just stop after you've learned how to multiply them. Straight across, right. So what's 1 times pi? What's 2 times 2? Four. So it should be, and then we have to add then pi over 4. So 2 pi over 4. When you add fractions, the common denominator stays the same. So that's 2 pi over 4, or if I reduce it, pi over 2. Negative 3 times 1 plus zero, negative three. It's okay. I'm not just trying to be, like, I'm trying to make, make it as participative because I think it helps, right? Like, I can do this very quickly with no effort. You can't. So we're going to practice. So you're going to practice right now, whether you wanted to or not. Here it is. All right. What's happening next? What do, I, what do I do next to get my next point? What do I start by doing? Pi times, which is, Miriam, pi over 2. And then what do we have to do after that? Add pi plus pi over 4. So we have pi over 2 plus pi over 4. A half plus a quarter is? A third. <laughs> there you go. So 3 pi over 4. You know what? If you write down the right thing but you can't say the right thing, that's still, that matters most, right? Okay. Then what is the y going to be? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's do the next one. Do the next one. Um, is it three pi or two pi? That's a three pi over two. So three pi over two times one half. Mm -hmm. So three pi over four. Mm -hmm. And then three pi over two times. Wait, we're three pi over three. Yeah. Then you have to add pi over four. Miriam, that's correct. Pi is correct. Three fourths plus one fourth is a whole. I, you know, like again, I'm trying to keep it simple, right? Like we're trying to bring it back to like. Like, yeah, get it done, right? <laughs> All right, what's the next? What's our next y? Um, negative one times negative three y, so negative three y. There's the oh, the positive positive negative positive the positive positive negative the negative the y is the negative one. You're plugging oh. the negative one into the y, oh. right? So then it's just three. Yes. And then zero. Plus zero, which okay. is, which is still three. Yeah, you got it. Okay. And then two pi times one half mm -hmm. is two pi over two. Okay, which reduces down to pi over one. Great, pi. or just pi. Okay. Uh huh. And then you add pi over four. Great. So two pi over four, which is So you so you need a common denominator. That's right, Miriam. So pi would be four pi over four. Okay. That was a that was some effort. But you can do it, right? Just keep in mind, keep in mind, if you don't feel confident with your fraction abilities, if you wanted to do pi plus pi over 4, if you just leave off the pies, you do 1 plus 1 fourth, and then you do math and fraction, it'll add the fractions. You can just write the pi in yourself at the end. Right? Or if you looked at the pattern going on here, look at the x coordinates. How, what is the x coordinate changing by each time? Not a half a pi, a quarter pi. Right? If I add a quarter to a fourth, that's a half. If I add a quarter to a half, that's three quarters. If I add a quarter to three quarters, that's one. If I add a quarter to one, that's one and a quarter. Right? So if you wanted to, you could just be like, okay, that's one pi over four, and then that's a half. Well, that's just going up by a quarter. So the next one should be three quarters and then a whole, and then one and a quarter, and you don't even have to do the fraction adding, right? You could just like see the pattern and go. And that's a little risky because if you goof the pattern up, then you goof them all up. But you could do it that way. Now that I have these points, what do I do? I plot those points on my graph. So the first point I'm going to graph is pi over 4 comma 0. So I go over here. Where is pi over 4 going to be located? So if I go here, this is pi, and this is 0. So what is this one? That's pi over 2. So where's pi over 4 at? Right there, and halfway in between 0 and pi over 2, right? Is everybody okay with that? The next one is pi over 2, comma, negative 3. 
We know where pi over 2 is, and then negative 3 would be like down here. And then where's 3 pi over 4 going to be? 3 pi over 4? Mm -hmm. three. Um, a little to the right of the 3 pi is barely, like a quarter. It's halfway in between a half and a whole, right? <laughs> It's right here. So you're telling me three fourths is the same as three. Wait, you said three five, right? Over four. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Like the three pi on the x axis, like so. Yeah, I see it. What about it? Why would I put it Because because point seven five is not three. Okay, thank you. Sorry. That's okay. I was gonna. I, I, it was like it's so. It's hard to find a way to explain it. Okay. 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 Good. Oh, if it's like above a four, then it's definitely before just pi. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what you're saying there, but maybe <laughs> if the fraction is bigger than one, it's after pi. If the fraction is less than one, it should be before pi. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. okay. We're making progress, though, right? We're figuring out all the things that we're like, oh, yeah, I need to get better at this thing that I should be good at by now. Yeah. I'm trying to make it as, like, again, as simple as we can. Right? Okay. Okay. But I just want to, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not. I think I'm getting there. Okay. I'm trying very hard to present this in like the most intuitive way possible all right next thing we have is uh pi three it'll be fine it'll be fine and then we have five pi over th uh four zero so that's like one period right I would want you to fill the space though. So we're just going to continue the pattern. So I'll go half over, three down, half over, three up, half over, three up, half over, three down, half over, uh, three down, half over, three up, half over, three up, half over, three down, half over, three down, half over, three up. Half over three up. Right? Like I'm just not doing anything sneaky. I'm just kind of following the same pattern of where the points were. And then we're going to do the same thing this way. So half over three up, half over three down, half over three down. And there is a wonderful, excellent graph. I can see all the points you plotted. Right, I can see everything connected. It looks neat. It's on the like obvious grid lines and stuff. Like this would be great. If you could give me something that resembled this, I'd be really thrilled. Okay? Yeah. Rather than what I got from a lot of your guys' homework, which kind of looked like this. <laughs> which is like I don't even know what to do with this, but it's not right. I don't even know what to say other than you didn't plot anything. What did you graph? I don't know. Looks like something my four-year-old daughter did. Okay. All right. Let's clear. Let's let's clear our desks and let's do this darn thing, right?